I wanted to make a little video about oil. I'm not an oil engineer. I'm not an oil scientist. I don't work in a laboratory. I am not the know-all, be-all, end-all of the oil industry. I just wanted to talk a minute about what I have experienced about my, I call myself limited knowledge because no matter, unless you do it for a living 24 seven, you're gonna have limited knowledge. Unless you're in the business, working in the muck, so to speak, things goes on that you don't know about or happens. So there's always a question, synthetic or traditional dinosaur oil? Yes, it's called dinosaur oil because, well, Google it and find out why they call it dinosaur, because that's what it is. Plants and animals and crap. <gasps> All right, then there's an oil called synthetic. Anytime you hear the word synthetic, as we learned even when I'm, I'm an exterminator still, synthetic pesticides is what we use. And that means man-made. The man made it. Like dinosaurs did not die to make your engine run, all right? They had no idea their bodies was gonna be used inside your engine oil. Like, oh, there goes a T-Rex out the exhaust. That's probably Velociraptor right there. Yeah. Anyway, they had no idea they was gonna be used as a lubricant, which is <laughs> it's kind of funny. And not at the same time. But they're big and mean and they would have eat us all. So it was either them or us, I say. Anyway, all jokes aside, I hear a lot of stuff, a lot of misnomers. I did watch a whole thing about synthetic and semi-synthetic. The rule is semi-synthetic oils, if they only have like one part oil, like synthetic, that means like 99 parts traditional and one part synthetic, they can call it semi-synthetic. So unless you buy a true synthetic oil, you're getting probably 99% or more <laughs> dinosaur oil. There's a whole program you can watch about that. All right. So here's what you hear. You'll hear people using an engine. Say I have this engine. Say it's like five plus years old, especially on lawnmowers and cars too. This goes for any combustion engine. I didn't have no trouble or problems with my engine leaking or nothing until I started using synthetic. Ding, 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 ding. Here's why. Dinosaur oil, if you ever take an engine apart, that's back then all we had was dinosaur. It cakes the absolute mess out of an engine, the inside. It just builds up. Picture like somebody taking putty and spackling it on the inside of the engine. All around it, the valves, everything just all caked up. Some brands of oil are worse than others. Pins oil used to be real bad for caking up back in the day, but they've, I reckon, changed it. But it don't matter. So what happens is, oh, I heard this thing called synthetic, which is man-made oil, and it's designed for engines. Dinosaur oil was not designed for an engine. Synthetic was. Synthetic was. That's why it's better. It lasts longer. It takes heat better. Heat is what kills engine. Heat equals friction equals war parts or advanced wearing. Synthetic will keep your engine cooler and does not get hot. The viscosity doesn't break down as soon. Like if you use it in your car, you can go a minimum of 5,000 miles instead of the 3,000. Actually, it'll go about 10, depending on the dust and air and the dirt and driving conditions, stop and go, mountain driving, millions of factors. But on lawnmowers, it's pretty cut and dry. Not in the heat wise, but what it does to an engine. It cakes it up, so what happens is these things have paper gaskets and then you'll have some O-rings somewhere, which they do sell lubricants for these things. Like I've got something over there that's supposed to replenish O-rings to keep stuff from leaking in your like hydro system. I don't use it in these, but I used it in an old, that old mower I had. So what happens is it cakes up the engine and people will go and buy synthetic oil. Bloop, 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 bloop. All right, synthetic oil, I hate using this word, world, word, naturally cleans an engine. It can't naturally because, well, I guess it can, because even though it's synthetic and it's not natural, it, it has cleaning properties in it. All right, if those paper gaskets in this engine, around the head and everything, you've got gaskets, the head, the valve cover, you've got a, uh, you got a top and bottom, uh, what you call it, 
to keep the oil from coming out of the crankshaft. I had to change one on that Toro. Do you remember? Do you remember my Toro? So you have to change the top and the bottom seals. Those seals will dry out. They'll wear out. They dry out. But if you take that old dinosaur oil and it cakes up around it, right? And it cakes up around these paper gaskets. Those valve cover gasket right there. And the valve cover gasket sits on the head. The piston goes in the head and the head sit. Wait a minute. The jug sits on the block. So block, then the piston jug, where the piston actually moves, and then the valves is right there. It goes down, down, up. They're not going up. They go down, then back up. Everybody picks. I do say some wrong words sometimes because I'm just talking off the cuff, and I don't want to edit. I don't care about editing. So there's paper gaskets between that and the cylinder and the block, right? Well, the oil builds up on it. Well, you need condi uh, conditioner for gaskets. That oil needs to touch it. I know it sounds weird, where well, the gaskets will dry up. Have you ever heard of somebody parking a vehicle or something for a long time, they crank it up and it has oil leaks everywhere? Yahtzee, bing, 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 bing. That's because the oil wasn't conditioning, let's just say it, making it moist, <laughs> in a essence, keeping it, viable because when they dry out and get brittle from the heat and no more oil touches it it just gets hard and crispy in the heat of the engine so it doesn't last as long so then you put synthetic in there the synthetic goes in there and just picture somebody scraping the walls with a putty knife cleaning off all the inside of the engine because that's what starts happening it slowly starts cleaning the engine inside well eventually it cleans off where the paper gaskets are covered in the oil, the old dinosaur oil, and it hits it. Well, those paper gaskets was completely relying on the buildup of the dinosaur oil. And when that dinosaur oil cake, caked up, removes, which, was, which actually was acting as a gasket, when you remove that, the oil is introduced, reintroduced to the gasket, the paper gasket. The paper gasket has gotten hot, super, super hot and cold, hot and cold from the engine turning on and off, on and off with no lubrication, nothing. So what happens? It cooks and dries up like a piece of paper on, you know, on heat. You ever watch what a piece of paper does when it's heated in the oven? It almost catches fire. Well, it becomes brittle and junk. So then the oil starts leaking and you're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Especially the top crank seal and the bottom crank seal because that rubber in those, if it never hits oil, that will go, it seems like it goes first, I swear. But anyway, so the synthetic oil is just cleaning the whole engine off and then it's going back to where the oil is supposed to be. But by that time, the gaskets is already worn out, brittle, crunchy. So it just goes right through it. Uh, uh, think of it as a dam on the water. It holds back the water, right? Well, a gasket holds back the oil in the engine so two parts can be attached. Of course, you know, on cars, a lot of blocks are made of one metal, steel. It just depends on what year, you know, like you stamp steel or there's all kinds of different over the decades of blocks but they're never almost never i i mean aluminum and all heads went to aluminum so you had two different opposing metals they call it so your block would get hotter than your aluminum heads so that temperature discrepancy causes problems and breaks down the gasket it's so hot on one side and a lot cooler on the other right that breaks down the gasket that's why you have Intake gasket leaks, exhaust manifold leaks a lot of times from the gasket leaking or, you know, manifold bolts break too from the excess heat on one side and super, not super cool, but a whole lot cooler on the block than it is on the muffler. Those variances in heat destroy everything and that's what's happening here. Variance of heat. The heat is being blocked off or the oil or the condi conditioner, which would be the oil touching the gasket keeping it moist. We're going to use these words loosely. I'm putting this in layman's term. Keeps that gasket lasting for years, but as soon... So here's what you got to do. Let's cut through this chase. You can go ahead and Google this. This is accurate what I'm saying. 
So what I recommend you doing is either pick, all right? Pick. If you want to use dinosaur oil, use it from now on. I wouldn't, but just do it. Because if you start with that after a long time, you know, if you're going every other oil change, going back and forth, that ain't gonna do nothing. But if you're using dinosaur oil hundreds of hours in your mower or car, boat, whatever the frick you're doing, Yes, even two-stroke oil does the same thing, even though it's only got one gasket and the jug there. And the, it can still do it, but you either run synthetic or don't. I say run synthetic. Yes, you can mix them. No matter what anybody says, I've watched a whole documentary on the oil industry talking about synthetics, and the chemist all said, the thing you don't want to do is mix the weights. You don't want to take a 2050 synthetic and mix it with a 530 synthetic or dinosaur. Never mix the weights. That's what they say, not me. If you want to learn more, if I find it, the documentary, well, you could, you've got an internet. You search it yourself. But as far as synthetic and traditional, you can mix the oils. Don't... People go, you can't mix the oils. It ain't like Ghostbusters where you cross the streams, you know. It's oil. It's oil. So I would choose, I use synthetic because it, it can tolerate the heat. These are air-cooled engines. They need more cooling than anything because they don't have no radiator with liquid running through the block to keep it in the head to keep it cooler. It uses air. That fan on the top is so guarded and protected. Make sure leaves don't pile up on it. That's what keeps, and this is called a you shroud, this whole top part catches, it sucks in and blows down on the engine all around. You take this shroud completely off and just have a naked motor, you're going to run your motor, if your engine, if you run it long enough, because it'll overheat. That shroud, just picture that, just somebody blowing on your burnt finger real hard. That's an air-cooled engine, all right? So if you use synthetic, it has higher tolerances and keeps it cooler. So synthetic will last longer. It'll make your engine last longer. It's just better. Better, 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 better. Traditional oil don't last as long, period. So the reason I have, the only problem I really have is why Kawasaki, unless I have missed it, if y'all know, let me know. They should have an engine hour change for synthetic and dinosaur because the synthetic oil will last longer, period. I don't care to change my oil, but I don't like wasting it. Yes, you recycle oil and stuff, but I, and it's way more expensive. You need to get every penny out of it, but at the same time, it's not gonna hurt if you change your oil more often, but you're wasting, you see what I'm saying? How many times do you need to wash the pans before you put them back up, you know what I mean? Oil is good to till it ain't, period. So changing it before or way early is just wasting money. Wasting resources on the planet. I mean, I could go on for hours. So I think we need more viable definitions about when to change the oil on hours. But see, again, here it comes. You got to know your surroundings. Like Tennessee, and we know our weather here. And that's why if you open your owner's manual, it tells you by weather temperature what oils to use. Everybody wants to use 2050 or something. Oh, I heard it's thicker. Well, no crap. 20 weight. But don't use it if you live in gosh dang Ohio in your engine. It'll tell you which region and what temperatures those oils are good for because it has higher 2050 you don't want to crank because it's going to turn into god dang uh, syrup in your engine in the north. So when it starts getting cold, you see what I mean? Then if you're far down south, you don't want to use a super thin oil either. I mean, we could start talking about how these new uh, engines with hydraulic lifters and cars use OW20 and stuff because of the way the, they're made. They're made to use that. These are lawnmower engines. The Kawasaki Kohler Briggs has a little chart. Always go to your owner's manual. That's who you listen to before you listen to anybody. Don't Google everything and believe it. Look in that book. Kawasaki made this engine and that one. And the, I, was, I don't have a Kohler engine. Oh, <laughs> I was like, I was going to point at different brands I had. 
Here I don't. I got a Kohler and the other Toro. They know more than you know. They know more than I know because that's what they do for a living. You know more about mowing the grass. They know more about making the mo uh, engine that you use to mow your grass. You see what I'm saying? So that's my discussion about synthetic versus dinosaur oil, traditional oil. Weight, it goes by temperature outside. And like if you live more towards Arizona, say, and it's more sandy conditions, you need to change your air filter more and your oil more. Like a lot of times, Kawasaki recommends keeping your oil filter for two oil change cycles. I don't do that. My engines are worth more than that to me, so I buy another oil filter. They say you don't have to, so look in the book. The book knows it. So that's what I want to say. You pick what you want. I'm going to use synthetic. I use it in everything now. Dinosaur oil is fine in your hydraulics. Skag will tell you. Hydro gear. You can use 2050 in your hydros. Traditional dinosaur oil or synthetic because it's the same crap. One's man-made and one's natural. natural. So that's it. Getting another phone call. Peace and chicken grease. <laughs>